Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to SiliconANGLE Media's coverage of Dell Technologies World 2018. I'm Stu Lineman here with my co-host Keith Townsend. Happy to welcome back to the program Tom Burns, who's the SVP of Networking and Solutions at Dell EMC. Tom, great to see you. Great to see you guys as well. Good to see you again. All right, so I, I, I feel like one of those CNBC guys, guys. It's like Tom, I remember back when Force 10, you know, <laughs> was acquired by Dell and all the various pieces and uh, that, that have gone on in converged infrastructure. But of course, with the merger, you, you've gotten some new pieces uh, That's correct. To, to your toy chest. That's correct. Uh, so uh, maybe, maybe give, give us the update first as to you know what's under your purview. Right, right. So I continue to, to uh, support and, and manage the entire global networking business on behalf of Dell EMC. Uh, and then recently, I picked up uh, what we called our converged infrastructure uh, business, or the VX Block, VScale business. Uh, and I continue to also manage what we call enterprise infrastructure which is basically anytime our customers want to extend the life of their infrastructure around memory, storage, optics, and so forth, we support them with Dell EMC certified parts. And then we add to that some third-party componentry around rack power and cooling, software, cumulus, big switch, things, things like that, Riverbed, Silver Peak, others. Uh, and so with that particular portfolio, we also cover what we call the Dell EMC ready solutions, both for the service provider uh, but then also for you know traditional enterprises as well. Yeah, well, it, it, luckily there's no change in any of those environments. No. Networking's <laughs> no. been static for decades. Uh, th I mean, they threw a product line that I mean, last I checked was somewhere in the three to four billion dollar range. You know, it, with the VX block uh, uh, under what you're talking yeah, there. It, it's a, so it's, yeah. yeah. Maybe you could talk. What does this mean? Because you know, I, I think of you, you know, you're a networking guy. Right. Keith and I are networking guys by background. Obviously, networking's a piece of this, but how? how but give us a little bit of kind of the, how the sausage is made inside to sure. get to this stuff. Well, I, I think when you talk about all these solutions, you know, cloud, hybrid cloud, public cloud, when you think about you know, software defined X, the network is still pretty darn important, right? I often say that if the network's not working, it's going to be a pretty cloudy day. Uh, it's not going to connect. And so the fabric continues to remain one of the most critical parts of the solution. So the thought around the VX block and moving that in towards the networking team is the importance of the fabric and the capability to scale out and scale up with our customers' workloads and applications. Um, and so that's that's probably the reason, primarily the reason. And then we can also look at how we can work very closely with our storage division, because that's the key IP component coming from Dell EMC on the block side, uh, and see how we can continue to help our customers solve their problems when it comes to kind of this uh, not your do-it-yourself, but kind of do-it-for-me environment. All right, I, I know Keith wants to jump in, but one just kind of high-level question for you. I look at, you know, networking, we've really been talking about disaggregation of what's yeah. going on. It's really about dis dis disaggregated systems. And then you've got convergence, and you know, right. there's other parts of the group that have hyper-convergence. How do you kind of square the circle on the, the, those two trends, and how do those go together? Well, I, I think it's pretty similar on, on whether you go hyper-converge, converge, or do it yourself. You build your own block, so to speak. There's a set of buyers that want everything to be done for them. They want to buy the entire stack, they want it pre-tested, they want it certified, they want it supported. And then there's a set of customers that want to do it themselves, and that's where we see this opportunity around disaggregation. So we see it primarily in hyperscale and cloud, but we're seeing it more and more in large enterprise, medium enterprise, particular verticals where customers are in essence looking for some level of agility or capability to interchange uh, their solutions by a particular vendor or solutions that are coming from the same vendor but might be a different IP as an example. And I'm really proud of the fact that Dell EMC really kicked off this disaggregation of the hardware and software and networking you know, some four and a half years ago. And now you see some of the, let's say, larger industry players starting to follow suit and they're starting to disaggregate their software as well. Yeah, I, I would have said just the commonality between those, those two seemingly opposed trends, it's scale. Right. It's how, do, how do customers really help scale these environments? Exactly, yeah. exactly. It depends a lot around the, the customer environment, what kind of skill sets do they have, are they willing to you know, help you know, go through some of that do-it-yourself uh, type of process. Obviously, Dell EMC Services is there to help them in those particular cases, but we kind of have this, you know, buying conundrum of, of you know, build versus buy. I think uh, my old friend Chad Sackage used to say there's different types of customers that want a VX rail or build it themselves or they want a VX block. We see the same thing happening in the networking. There's those customers that want disaggregated hardware and software, and in some cases, even disaggregated software. 
putting those protocols and features on the switch that they actually use in the data center, rather than buying a full proprietary stack. But we continue to, to build the full stack for you know, a select number of customers as well, because that's important to that particular sector. So again, Tom, two very different ends of the spectrum. I was at ONS a couple of months ago, talked to the team. Dell is a huge sponsor of the open source community. Now, I don't think many people know that. Can you yeah. talk about the open source relationship that, uh, or the relationship that Dell Networking has with the open source community? Absolutely, we, were, uh, we, we first made our venture into open source actually uh, with Microsoft in their Sonic work. So they're creating their own network operating software and we made a joint contribution around the switch abstraction interface, or SI. So that was put into the Open Compute project probably around three and a half, maybe four years ago. And that's right after we announced this disaggregation. Uh, we then uh, built basically an entire layer of what we call our, our OS 10 base, or what's known in the Linux Foundation as OPX. And we contributed that to the OPX, or to the Linux Foundation, where basically that gives the customer the capability through the software that, that takes care of all the hardware, creates this SWIP subtraction interface to gather the intelligence from the ASIC and the silicon and bringing it to a control plane, which allows APIs to be connected for all your northbound applications or your general NASs that you want to use, or a disaggregated NAS, depending on what you want to do. So we've been very active in Linux, we've been very active in uh, OCP as well. Uh, we're seeing more and more of kind of embracing this opportunity. You've probably seen uh, recently AT&T announced uh, a, a rather large uh, endeavor to replace tens of thousands of routers with basically white box switches and, and open source uh, software. So we really think that this trend is moving and I'm, I'm pretty proud that you know, Dell EMC was a part of getting that all started. So there was an awful lot of provider talk. You cover both the provider space and the enterprise space. Talk to us about where the two kind of meet. The, you know, the provider space, they're, they're creating software, they're embracing OpenStack, they're creating plugins for uh, this aggregated networking, right. and then there's the enterprise. There's opportunity there. Where do you see the enterprise leveraging this aggregation versus the service provider? Well, I think it's this move towards software defined. If you heard in, in Michael's keynote today, and you'll hear more tomorrow from Jeff Clark, the whole world is moving to software defined. It's, it's no longer if, it's when. And I think the opportunity for enterprises that are kind of in that you know, transformation stage of moving from traditional software defined, or excuse me, traditional uh, data centers to the software defined, they can look at disaggregation as an opportunity to give them that agility and capability in a manner in which they can kind of continue to manage the old world, but move forward into the new world of disaggregation software defined uh, with the same infrastructure. You know, it's, it's, it's not well known that Dell EMC, uh, we've made our switching now capable of running five different operating softwares. That's dependent upon workloads and use cases and the customer environment. So if traditional enterprise, they want to look at traditional protocols, traditional features. We give them that capability through our own OS. We can reduce that with OS partners, software coming from some of our OS partners, giving them just the protocols and features that they need for the data center or even out to the edge. Uh, and it gives them that flexibility and change. So I think it really comes at this point of when are they going to move towards moving from like traditional you know, networking to the next generation of networking, and I'm very happy. I think Dell Technologies is leading the way. Yeah, Tom, I'm wondering if you could expand a little bit about that. When I think about you know, Dell and, and this show, I mean, there's a huge ecosystem. We're sitting right near the Solutions Expo, which will be opening in a little bit, but you know, on the networking side, you've got everything from all the SDN, SD-WAN pieces yeah. uh, to all the you know, network operating systems that can sit on top. Maybe you know, give us kind of the update on the, the overview of the ecosystem, uh, you know, where Dell yeah. wins. Yeah, you know. I mean, if you think about 30 something years ago when Michael started the company and Dell started, what was it about? It was really about transforming you know, personal computing, right? It was about taking something that was kind of a traditional proprietary architecture and commoditizing it, making sure it's scalable and supportable. If you think of the changes that's occurred now between the mainframe and x86, this is what we think is happening in networking. And at Dell Technologies in the networking area, whether it's Dell EMC or it's VMware, we're really geared towards this SDX type of market, virtualization layer two, layer three, disaggregated switching in the data center. Now SD-WAN with the acquisition of VeloCloud by VMware. We're really helping customers transform at the way networking is being managed, operated, supported, to give them much more flexibility and agility in a software defined market. That being said, we continue to support a multitude of other partners. We have Cumulus, Big Switch, IP Infusion, and Pluribus as network operating software alternatives. We have our own, and then we have them as partners. 
on the SD-WAN area, while we lead with VeloCloud, we have Silver Peak and we also have Versa Technologies, which is getting a, a lot of uptick in the, in the area, both in the service provider and in the enterprise space. Huge area of opportunity for enterprises to really lower their cost of connectivity uh, in their branch offices. So, you know, again, you know, we at Dell, we, we want to have a, an opinion. Uh, we have some leading technologies that we own, but we also partner with some very good best of breed solutions. But being that we're open and we're disaggregated and we have an incredible scaling and service department or organization, we have this capability to bring it together for our customers and support them as they you know, go through their IT transformation. So Dell EMC is learning a lot of lessons as you guys start to embrace software defined. A couple of uh, Dell EMC worlds ago, big announcement, Chad. Chad talked about scale I/O and and abstracting and giving away basically scale I/O the basic solution for free. Then you guys pull back and you say, you know what? That's not quite what customers want. They want a package solution. So we're talking on one end total disk aggregation, another end, you know what? In a different area of IT, customers seem to want package solutions. Yeah. Can you talk to the importance of software defined? and packaged solutions. Right, it's, it's kind of this theory of appliances, right? Or, or, or how is that software going to be packaged? And we give that flexibility uh, in either way. If you think of VxRail or, or even our vSAN operating, you know, our vSAN uh, ready node, it, it gives that customer the, the capability to know that we put that software and hardware together, we tested it, we certified it, most importantly we can support it with kind of one throat to choke, one single call. And so I think the importance for customers are, again, Am I building it myself or do I want to buy a stack? If I'm somewhere in the middle, maybe I'm doing a hybrid or, or perhaps a, a rail type of a solution where it's just compute and storage for the most part. Maybe I'm looking for something different on my networking or connectivity standpoint. Uh, but Dell EMC having the entire portfolio can help them at any point of the venture or any point of the solution. So you know, I, I think that you're absolutely right. The, the customer buying is, 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 is varied. You know, you've, got, you've got those that want everything from a single point and you got others that are saying, I want decision points. I think a lot of the opportunity around the cost savings, mostly from an optic standpoint, are those that are moving towards disaggregated. It doesn't lock them into a single solution. It doesn't get them into that kind of long life cycle of when you're going to do changes and upgrades and so forth. This gives them a lot more flexibility and capability. Yeah. Tom, so sometimes we have uh, the, the tendency to get down in the weeds on these products, especially in the networking space. One of my complaints was the whole SDN wave didn't seem to connect necessarily to some of the big businesses' challenges. Heard in the keynote this morning a lot of talk about digital transformation. Bring us up to speed as to how networking plays into that overall story, what you're hearing from customers, and if you have any examples, I'd love to, yeah, love to hear. Yeah, yeah. no, so, so I think networking plays a critical part of the IT transformation. I think if you think of you know, the, the first move in virtualization around compute, then you have the software-defined storage, the networking component was kind of the laggard, it was kind of holding back, and in fact today, I think some analysts say that even when certain software-defined storage implementations occur, interruptions or issues happen in the network because the network has then been built and, 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 and architected for that type of environment. So the, the companies end up going back and re-looking at how that's done. And companies overall, are, I think, are frustrated with this. They're frustrated with the fact that the network is holding them back from enabling new services, new capabilities, new workloads, moving towards a software-defined environment. And so I think this area, again, of disaggregation, of software defined, of offering choice around software, I, I, I think it's, it's doing well and it's really starting to see an uptick. And, and the customer experience is as follows. One is open networking, where it's based upon standard commodity-based hardware. It's simply less expensive than proprietary hardware. So they're going to have a little bit of savings from the CapEx standpoint. But because they move towards this disaggregated model where perhaps they're using one of our third-party software partners that happens to be based in Linux, or even our own OS X that's now based in Linux. Look at that, the, the tools around configuration and automation are the same as compute and the same as storage. And so therefore, I'm, I'm saving on this configuration and automation and so forth. So we have examples such as Verizon that literally not only saves about 30% cost savings on their CapEx, they're saving anywhere between 40 and 50% on their OpEx, why? They can roll out applications much faster. They can make changes to their network much faster. I mean, that's the benefit of virtualization and NSX as well, right? Instead of having this decisions of sending a, a, a network engineer to a closet to do CLI, down into the dirt, as you would say, and reconfigure the switch, a lot of that now is being extracted to a software lever and, and giving the company much more capability to make the changes across the fabric 
or to segregate it using uh, NSX microsegmentation to make the changes to those users or to that particular environment that needs those changes. So just an incredible amount of flexibility. I think SDN, let's say six, seven years ago, everyone thought it was going to be CapEx. You know, cheaper hardware, cheaper ASICs, et cetera. It's all about OpEx. It's around flexibility, agility, common tool sets, better configuration, faster automation. So we all have this Nirvana idea that we can take our traditional stacks, whether it's uh, prepackaged CI configurations that's pre-engineered, HCI, SDN, disaggregated networking, add to that a software layer, this magical automation. Can you unpack that for us a little bit? What are you seeing practically, whether it's in a server provider perspective or on the enterprise, what are those crucial relationships that Dell EMC is forming with the software uh, industry to right. bring, bring right. forth that automation? Well, well, obviously we have a very strong relationship with, with VMware, right. and so you have vRealize and, and VROps and, and so forth, and, and in fact, uh, in the new VX Block 1000, you're going to see a lot of us uh, gearing a lot of our development towards the vRealize suite, so that helps those customers that are in a VMware environment. We also have a very strong relationship with Red Hat and OpenStack, where we've seen very successful implementations in the service provider space. Those that want to go more, a little bit more disaggregated, a little bit more open, even from the storage percent, uh, uh, participation like Ceph and so forth. But then obviously we're doing a lot of work with Ansible, Chef, and Puppet. For those that are looking for more of a common open source set of tools across server, compute, ne or, you know, compute networking, storage, and so forth. So I think the real benefit is kind of looking at it at that you know, 25,000 foot look view on how we want to automate. Do you want to go towards containers? Do you want to go traditional? What are the tool sets that you've been using in your compute environment, and can those be brought down to the entire stack? All right, well, Tom Burns, really appreciate catching up with you. I know Keith will be spending a little time at Interop this week, too. I know I'm excited that we have a lot more networking here at, at this end of the strip also this week. So. Appreciate it. Listen to Pat's uh, talk this afternoon. I think you're going to be hearing even more about Dell Technologies networking. All right, Tom Burns, right. SVP of Networking and Solutions at Dell AMC. I'm Stu Miniman, this is Keith Townsend. Thanks for watching theCUBE.